Hi, and welcome to onyouryogamat.com. My name's Jason, and I'm going to be taking you through this 45-minute Hatha yoga practice. This is a great practice if you're a beginner or new to yoga. And on this website, there are two of these Hatha beginners classes. And this is the first of the two, but you can do them in any order. We are beginning by standing at the front of our yoga mats. With the feet together, the hands are by the sides, and we're looking straight ahead. Bring awareness to your feet and feel the toes spreading down into the mat below you and the heels behind you. Relax the shoulders and the palms are facing in. Keeping the face soft, bring awareness to your breath. It's this connection with the breath that moves us through any yoga practice. Becoming aware of your next breath in and your next breath out. Wherever you feel the breath, keep your awareness tuned inwards as you inhale and as you exhale. Not only therefore getting the benefits of the physical practice we're about to do, but we see if we can stay in this calmer, quieter place in our heads to step back from sometimes what feels like a non-stop, continuous stream of thinking. Breathing in and breathing out. The most important thing we do in a yoga class is to stay focused in on the breath. So making this the priority. And if this is the first time you've done yoga or yoga is fairly new to you, you're going to just take it nice and steady and do whatever feels appropriate. Taking the hands in front of the chest in prayer position, gently pressing the palms together. We begin this Hatha Yoga practice with Surinamaskara, that's sun salutation. This range of movements is a really nice way to warm up the body, building up strength, flexibility and stamina. We aim to coordinate the movements with the breath, but I'm just going to take you through each of the movements first, and it's okay if you take a few breaths in each of these positions, just to get used to them and then we'll start moving on a little bit quicker when they become familiar to you. We begin the sun salutation with the hands in prayer position in front of the chest. This is called Namaskara Mudra. From here, moving into the second movement by lifting the arms up. The palms can face away, relax the shoulders, looking up a little and taking it nice and easy on the neck. Extend to wherever feels appropriate even if that feels like the arms are slightly out in front of you. We release gently into the third movement of this sun salutation, bending the knees if we need to, to start folding forwards. If this is new, you might well just have your hands on your shins or maybe your ankles. Try and let the head hang wherever you are. It's important now to bend the knees further to plant the hands firmly down on the mat even if the hands are a little way in front of you. This means we can more easily step back into the fourth movement by taking our left foot back, gently coming down onto the left knee with the left toes behind and bending that right knee. Keeping the hands where they are, can you lift the chest and roll the shoulders back a little bit, looking forwards. From here, we press back into that left leg and take our right foot back behind us so the feet are fairly close and we can push back into our downward facing dog. Try and let the head hang here as you're gazing back and if this feels too much to keep the legs a little bit straighter then soften the knees as much as you need to. Gravity might start taking over here which is fine as we move into the sixth movement, lowering down. Bending the knees, come down onto the knees and lower your chest down to the mat between your hands so the hips are slightly lifted. You can put your chin gently down on the ground if that feels okay. This is one of the more challenging movements of this sun salutation. So however you end up lying down on your mat is perfectly okay for now. From here, we move into the seventh movement of this sun salutation by lifting the chest 
and the toes are still down on the ground as we roll the shoulders back. This is cobra. As much as you can, really try and feel the shoulders rolling down away from your ears. Chest lifts as we look forwards. From here, we press back into the eighth movement, which is back into the downward facing dog. Just getting your bearings here as we step the left foot back through to the front of the mat, coming down onto right knee, gently keeping the right toes down on the mat. So we're sinking down and with the palms down, lift the chest, look forwards. So we've come through on the opposite side and now bringing our right foot back through to the front of the mat we let the head hang and again the hands might come off the ground a little bit or you could experiment keeping the hands down on the ground and keeping the knees bent as much as you need to this is our forward bend and from here we are finishing in reverse order the 11th movement is to inhale. You could straighten the legs now if the knees were bent by pressing the feet into the ground, reaching the arms up, relaxing the shoulders so the palms are facing away from you. And then the last movement, 12, is to release the hands, bringing them back to prayer position in front of the chest. Well done for getting through that first sun salutation. We're about to do a few more of these sun salutations and we start to coordinate the breath with the movements. And if this starts to feel a little bit too much, just take it easy. You could sit down, just watch a few more. You could download the PDF so you can see the movements of this sun salutation and move through at your own pace. Ready to move on from here. The hands are back in prayer position. To inhale, extending the arms up with the palms facing forwards, lifting the gaze just a little. As we exhale, we fall forwards. Remember to soften the knees if you need to, hands on ankles, shins, whatever feels appropriate. It's important now though to bend the knees and plant the hands down so we can inhale, lowering down, stepping left foot back, bending right knee, coming down onto that left knee with the toes, the left toes on the mat, and keep lifting the chest, looking forwards. Exhale, we lift the hips and step the right foot back to join the left foot. Let the head hang, we're looking behind. This is the downward facing dog. Keep the legs active, even if the legs aren't straight, that's okay, and breathe in again here. Exhale, lowering down, knees coming down, keep the toes tucked and lowering the chest in between the hands so the hips still are lifted. Inhale, lift the chest, roll the shoulders back. Keep looking forwards, this is cobra. And then exhale, pressing back into downward facing dog again. Just relax the neck, look back briefly. And then inhale, the left foot comes forwards. We come down onto our right knee, exhale, drawing the right foot forwards to the front of the mat. Soften the knees here if you need to. Let the head hang, hands are low, maybe ankle shins or fingertips on the ground. Inhale, strong legs, press the feet into the ground, reach the arms up, space around the shoulders, palms facing forward, lift the chest if you can get the hands a little way back behind you before exhaling, hands back into prayer position in front of chest. The hands can remain in prayer position, ready for our third sun salutation. This is the first movement of the sun salutation, with the feet pressing evenly down to the ground. The second movement is to inhale, release the hands and reach them forwards, or eventually upwards, relaxing the shoulders, trying to lift the chest a little. Third movement is to exhale gently into our forward bend. We can keep the knees soft, placing the hands down to wherever feels appropriate. Let the head hang. It's important now, remember, to place the hands down on the ground by bending the knees. And the fourth movement, bending that right knee more, sinking down as we inhale, step that left foot back. And this time with the option to step that left foot further back with the toes on the mat and that left leg a little bit straighter now with the knee off the ground. And then exhale, pressing back into our downward facing dog by releasing that right foot back, lifting the hips. 
Just breathe in here again before exhaling into the sixth movement, lowering down. Press into the hands, coming down onto the knees. Keep the hips lifting a little bit and we're lying front down on the mat. Inhale, this is the seventh movement into Cobra. Lift the chest and roll the shoulders back as much as you can, keeping the hands gently pressing into the mat. Exhaling, moving back into the downward facing dog again. Lift the hips, activate the legs, even if they're not straight, that's okay. And then starting to look forwards, inhaling that left foot through as far as you can. And this time the option to keep your right leg straight with the toes down on the mat. Hands down still and lift the chest, roll the shoulders back. And then as we exhale the 10th movement, stepping that right foot forwards, bend the knees to let the head hang down. Inhale is the 11th movement. We're finishing the way we began by lifting the arms up, relax the shoulders, try and keep the arms active, lifting up to wherever feels appropriate. And then 12, exhale, releasing hands back to prayer position in front of chest. Good. Last one, taking it nice and easy. Remember the breath is the most important thing we're doing. And it's okay if you take a few breaths in each of these positions. So we start in Tadasana, standing with hands in prayer position. That's sometimes called Namaskara Mudra. As we inhale, we lift up into Hasta Uttanasana, raising the arms, lifting the chest a little bit. We exhale, folding gently forward into Padahastasana, which means moving the hands closer to the feet over time. But wherever you are, just feel the neck release, taking it easy on the hamstrings. It's important now as we inhale into Ashwa Sanchalasana, equestrian pose, to bend the knees. And with the hands now planted down, stepping that left foot back, keep lifting the chest, rolling the shoulders back. We exhale back into Adho Mukha Savasana. That's the downward facing dog. Keep lifting the hips and the feet are close together. An option here, instead of inhaling again, is to simply hold the breath and begin lowering down. Bending the knees, pressing the hands into the ground, into Ashtanga Namaskara, which means eight points of contact with the ground. Keeping the toes tucked as we inhale into Bhujangasana, Cobra. Lift the chest, keep those shoulders rolling back, looking gently ahead. And then exhaling, pressing back into Adho Mukha Savasana, downward facing dog. Feet close, relax the shoulders, gaze back. Inhaling the other side of Ashwa Shanchalasana. So that's the left foot stepping forwards, bending left knee. Remembering the challenge now is to keep that right leg straight. And then exhaling, folding forwards back into Padahastasana as the right foot comes through. Let the head hang, knee soft if you need to. We inhale back into Hasta Uttanasana. Lift the arms up, palms facing forwards, relax the shoulders gently look up and then exhale back into Tadasana that's standing with our hands back in Namaskara Mudra prayer position so that last sun salutation might have felt a little bit more fluid as you start to become a little bit more familiar with the movements which you will do over time and you could even aim to do a few more of those and these sun salutations on their own are a great mini practice. Just to get up and do four or five of these in the morning is a great start to your day. And if those sun salutations felt a little bit too much, then just do whatever feels appropriate and you can work to do more over time. But we're now ready to move on to do some postures one at a time. And we're gonna start in this Hatha yoga practice by lying down on our backs. So, bending the knees, coming down gently to sitting, and from sitting, supporting to lie down on your back. Postures lying down on the back are often referred to as supine postures. And we're going to begin with Shavasana, a relaxation, just for a minute. So taking the arms off the edge of the mat, palms face up towards the ceiling, separating the legs a little bit, with the toes drifting off to the side. Just relax here. Find that steady, equanimous breath. Let go. Breathe in. Breathe out. Feel the sensations throughout the entire body. 
Feel the back of the hands on the ground. Imagine the back of the head melting into the mat. Feel space around the shoulders and in the hips. Let the toes just drift off to the side. Breathe in. Breathe out. We begin here with a posture called Supta Hatara Parvatanasana, and it's not as scary as it sounds. Drawing the feet in and bending the knees. The feet now can touch the insides of the big toes and the knees, knees up towards the ceiling, and taking the arms further out to the side, palms facing down, relaxing the shoulders. We begin by gently exhaling, letting the knees drift down to the left. Gravity can do most of the work here and slowly taking it easy on the neck starting to gaze over your right shoulder. Keep breathing in this gentle twist. Inhale, exhale. A few more moments here. Breathe in, breathe out. Find the steadiness in the posture to match that still steady awareness of your breath. We then inhale, knees back up to center, pausing there for a moment, ready to let the knees drift down to the right. And again, gravity doing most of the work here, twisting on the opposite side, we can slowly turn our gaze over our left shoulder, relaxing the neck to look down towards your left hand, Breathing in, breathing out. A few more breaths here. Inhale, exhale. And from there, we inhale, knees back up to center. We can take the hands now by the sides, palms facing in, and separate the feet and the knees just a little, ready for Uttan Padasana. Keeping your right foot planted down on the ground, start extending your left toes up towards the ceiling. We can over time work at straightening that left leg a little bit more. So take it easy on your hamstring, that big muscle at the back of your left leg, and try and imagine that your left hip is rolling down onto the mat. It doesn't want to feel like you're lifting up in this posture. So feel the entire spine gently down on the ground. Keep the neck and the shoulders relaxed. Keep breathing. And then gently exhaling, releasing that left foot down. Taking a moment there to switch sides. So the left foot down on the ground as we start extending right foot up towards the ceiling. Keep that right leg gently working to, at some point, work that right leg a little bit straighter. Keep your right hip rolling down towards the mat. And notice that it could maybe be different a little on this side. And whatever feels appropriate to keep breathing steady breaths. Inhale. Exhale. And then gently releasing right foot down. We're going to have a go at doing that both legs at the same time. Just take a moment before you begin and then when you're ready inhale start lifting both feet off the ground extending upwards. Keep breathing. It might be a little bit more challenging to keep the legs straighter here. You can either keep a little bit of separation between the legs or if you wished Bring the feet and the legs together. Try and keep pointing the toes gently upwards to wherever you are. Keep breathing in, breathing out. Steady breath in and out. Let's just hold that a little bit longer. If you need to back off, that's okay. And then slowly bending the knees, bringing the feet down towards the ground. From there we can just draw the knees into the chest, give yourself a little hug and then gently roll onto one side 
and we're coming round, taking the feet behind us and the hands in front to lie down on our front to do some postures here. These are often referred to as prone postures. Getting used to that sensation of lying on the front with the feet behind you, on the tops of the feet, can you feel the big toe sides of the feet touching? Taking hands by our sides, back of the hands on the mat, palms up towards the ceiling, chin gently down on the ground. We're working towards a posture called Shalabhasana. And we're going to do this in two steps to begin with. So as you inhale, keep the hands relaxed down on the mat and begin lifting the chest a little bit. Let the head follow. Take it nice and easy on the neck, however far you're going. Just keep breathing. Keep rolling the shoulders back. You could imagine somebody with their fingers gently on your shoulders drawing you back. Keep the feet gently down on the mat behind you. Taking another breath here. And then exhale, release. With the chin now down on the ground and the hands still by the sides, bring awareness to your legs. Keeping your right leg where it is, inhale and activate that left leg. Can you lift your left toes off the mat and gently point them back behind you? Keep that left leg strong. Keep breathing. A few more breaths. Keep the face relaxed. And then exhale slowly that left leg down. We're going to switch sides, keeping your left leg down on the ground. Inhale, start extending your right leg back behind you. Try not to bend the knee too much, even if it feels like your right toes are just off the ground. Keep that right leg active and strong, pointing the toes back behind you. Keep breathing. And then exhale, release. Taking a few moments there. And we're going to have a go at doing both legs at the same time. Remembering, if this is too much, just repeat one leg at a time again. As you inhale, lift both feet up off the ground. Keep the toes together. Try and still feel the big toe sides of your feet touching. The legs are active. You could imagine someone gently holding onto your toes and drawing them backwards behind you. Breathing in and breathing out and exhale there coming slowly down take a few moments here and then we're going to have a go at doing the full posture and this posture is really great for bringing some strength and flexibility to the spine so the hands again are still gently down on the ground and your midsection remains on the ground as you inhale, begin to lift the chest, let the head follow. So you're just gazing still slightly downwards. And at the same time, if you can, activate the legs to start lifting the toes off the mat, pointing them back behind you. Feel the legs active. Keep lifting the chest. Make sure it feels okay on the neck. As much as you can, keep those shoulders rolling back. Just go as far as you feel appropriate, taking a few more breaths. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. One more breath, and then gently releasing, coming down. We're gonna take a few moments here just lying on our fronts and relaxing. Shavasana is often done when we lie on our backs for our relaxation. On the front, we can take a posture called Makrasana, crocodile posture. We take the hands in front of us, palms facing down, one hand on top of the other. If it feels okay, you can turn your feet out to the side, taking that easy on the knees and separating the feet a little bit. If that felt a bit uncomfortable, you could just still be on the tops of your feet with the feet close together, or you could separate them a little bit if you wished. Taking your head down onto the top of your hand, whichever hand is on top, 
and turning your head sideways. And just relax, release, and let go there for a few moments. And again, after the previous posture, Salabhasana, can you find that steady, equanimous, even breath? Can you here match the stillness of this crocodile posture? You could imagine you're a crocodile having a little snooze in the afternoon sun and matching the stillness of the posture with your still, steady quality of mind. Imagine you're that crocodile with not a care in the world. A few more moments here. And then, starting to gently use the hands to support as you lift a little, and whatever feels appropriate for you to come up, you can take that down onto one side, and we're coming back round to sitting, ready to do some seated postures. Our first seated posture is called Dandasana, staff posture. We straighten the legs as far as feels appropriate, as we sit upright. If it's too much to do this with straight legs, you could soften the knees a little bit. And if you're struggling just to sit down on the mat, you could sit on a book or a block. Wherever you are, try and feel the legs pleasantly active with the toes pointing up towards the ceiling. Taking your hands by your sides with the fingers spread, can you gently press your fingers into the mat beside you with your thumbs facing in and little fingers facing out. If you can relax the palms down towards the mat, you could. But either way, try and relax the shoulders, sit up as tall as you feel you can, and finally just bring your gaze down by tilting the head towards your knees. We're staying here in this posture for a few breaths. And we're staying here just a little bit longer in this seated meditative posture to again find that steady connection with the breath. Breathing in and breathing out. If it's too much to sit like this for a little bit longer, just feel free to readjust. You could bend the knees more. And if it's too much to keep sitting upright, just lean slightly forwards into it. That's no problem. A few moments longer here. And just notice the sensations again throughout the body. And notice where your awareness is. The mind is very easily distracted. So can you gently encourage it to come back into a more present place resting on the breath. From here, we're moving into a posture called Ardha Matsyandrasana. And this is a seated twisting posture. We're going to start bending our left knee gently, walking the left foot in about halfway. Very gently bending your right knee and drawing your right foot in close to that left foot. If that feels too much, you could keep that right leg straight or just backed off a little bit. Make sure the legs feel okay here in this position and especially the knees, in particular that right knee. We start turning to the left. So we can reach our right hand just round on the outside of that left knee and turn and place our left hand behind us facing backwards as we gently start to twist, turning to the left. Whatever feels appropriate, if it's too much to get the left hand down on the ground, you could be on your fingertips. Just do the best you can to sit up as if your head is going upwards, and then exhale, gently drawing your left shoulder back. Keep breathing nice, even, steady breaths here. Make sure you can find that steady quality of breath, especially in these twisting postures. It doesn't want to feel like the breath is being constrained by the posture. And if it is, you could always back off a little bit. 
try and feel as you inhale, you're lengthening the spine. And as you exhale, creating that gentle twist. One more breath here. And then turning to face the front. We're going to switch sides by backing off the legs. And then we begin by bending the right knee. Right foot comes in about halfway. And we can encourage our left foot to come in a little bit. Whatever feels appropriate, but check that feels all right on your left knee. Once we set it with the legs, we start turning to the right, reaching our left hand around the outside of your right knee for support and putting your right hand back behind you, not too far, either with the fingertips down on the ground or if you can release the whole palm down to the ground. As much as you can though, sitting up nice and tall as you breathe in and twisting gently to the right as you breathe out. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. Exhale, twist. And again, checking that the breath is free and easy. Inhale, exhale. A few more moments here. As you breathe in, imagine the spine gently lengthening as you exhale, accessing the twist. And then inhale, coming round to face the front. And exhale, just backing off the legs a little bit. One more seated posture is called Supta Kurmasana, sleeping tortoise posture. So we bring the feet towards us about halfway in and the soles of the feet are facing each other and we can take our hands to support the knees. You might just be here in this posture and if you wish to go a little bit further and if it felt okay to release the knees then the feet would slightly separate. The little toe sides of the feet will be together but the big toe sides of the feet would drift away from each other so the soles up towards the ceiling. The knees are just floating in space, make sure that feels okay on the hips. And optionally, you could lean a little bit of your body weight by curving the head down into that space in front of you. You could put your fingertips down in that space so you feel a little bit of support. You could, if you wish to go further, reach the hands forward to take the feet and let the head hang there. Gravity is doing most of the work in this posture. Double check it feels okay on the knees. Breathe space and awareness into your hips. And you can imagine as you round the back that your profile is that of the tortoise sleeping. A few more breaths here. Breathing in. Breathing out. If it's okay to stay here a few more moments, if you need to back off or come up a little bit, you can. Wherever you are is perfectly fine. matching the stillness of the posture with the still, steady awareness of your breath. And then releasing, lifting up, and you can cross the ankles, whatever it takes for you to come up to standing, ready for our last three standing postures. So we begin at the front of the mat, feet together, hands by sides, again in Tadasana, ready for Trikonasana. As we breathe in, we step out to the left, feet parallel, facing the long edge of our mat, lifting the arms to shoulder height with the palms facing down. We turn our left foot towards the back of the mat and our right foot turns in just a little bit. Before we go into the posture, try and keep facing the long edge of your mat. So we're not twisting, we're simply reaching that left hand slightly back and down. Down might be your shin, a little bit further to go might be to hold onto the ankle. Either way, it needs to feel like you're lifting up in this posture as you extend your right arm up towards the ceiling, 
fingertips lifting. Relaxing your right shoulder, gently taking it easy on the neck, can you gaze up to look at your right thumb. Feeling your right foot pressing back behind you. And if it's too much to do this with your left leg straight, that might be something to work towards. You could soften your left knee a little bit. Keep breathing as you inhale. Exhale. A few more moments in this posture. Keep both feet firmly down on the ground so you feel the support. Keep extending your right fingers up. And then we inhale and come up to that parallel position with the feet turned, lifting the arms, and then exhaling, returning to the front of our mat, feet together, hands by sides. For the right side of the posture, we step out to the right. Same distance with the feet. You could imagine your feet underneath your elbows with the arms lifted and turning our right foot to the back, left foot turns in. Keep that left hip rolling back, so we're not twisting, but we're simply reaching that right hand slightly back and down. It could be different on this side, reaching down either for your ankle or your shin. Once you're hooked up, we're extending the left hand upwards, extending that left arm. Make sure it feels okay on the neck to gently gaze up you might be able to catch sight of your left thumb. Feeling that left foot pressing back into the mat behind you. And again, the option might be on the right side of the posture to soften that right knee. Either way, the legs are active, the feet firmly pressing down into the mat. This twisting posture standing, keep gazing softly up, keep rolling your left shoulder back, Keep breathing steady, even breaths. And just a few more here. Before we inhale, gently coming up, feet parallel, lift out the arms to shoulder height, and then exhale, we return to face the front of our mat, feet together, hands by sides. We are ready for Virabhadrasana Warrior 2. We step out again to the left, but much wider with the feet this time. The feet parallel, the arms parallel to the ground, palms facing down. It would feel like your feet are underneath your wrists if that feels possible. We turn our left foot to the back of the mat again, turn our right foot in and begin bending your left knee. Look down and make sure that your knee is tracked over your heel. And keep pressing back, trying to keep that back right leg straight behind us. As we sink down a little bit, imagine your torso is vertical. So the head straight upwards, relaxing the shoulders and turning our gaze over our left fingertips, looking to the back. Imagine the thighs rolling away from each other as you sink down over your left knee. Keep pressing back. Can you feel the little toe side of that right foot down on the ground? A few more breaths here. Keep the gaze soft over those left fingers. Keep the arms active as if the fingertips are moving away from each other. One more breath here before we inhale straightening your left leg to come up to the side with the feet parallel, lift the arms, exhale, and then inhale, turning, bringing that left foot forwards, facing the front of the mat, hands by sides. Ready for the right side of warrior two. Inhale, stepping out as wide with the feet, extend the arms out, feet parallel, relax the shoulders, Glance down as you turn your right foot towards the back of the mat. Turn that left foot in just a little bit and sinking down over your right knee as far as feels appropriate. Don't worry if you're not going all the way down to 90 degrees, that might be something to work towards, but keep the knee in line with the heel. As you sink down, keep your body vertical. 
relax the shoulders. We're looking to the back over our right fingertips, feeling the left fingers and hands stretching back behind us. Keep pressing back. Can you feel the little toe side of your left foot pushing into the mat to support you? Feel that support over the right knee. Keep sinking down. Imagining the thighs rolling away from each other. A few more breaths here in the posture. If it's too much, you just come up a little bit or back off, that's okay. So long as you're breathing steady breaths in and out. And then inhale, coming up. Straight arms, feet parallel. And exhale, returning to the front of our mat, feet together hands by sides and ready for our last standing posture the krasna this is tree posture and this is a balanced posture transferring the weight onto your right leg so we can bend our left knee and lift our left foot off the ground as you gently take your left leg out to the side make sure that feels okay on your left knee as we start to move the sole of that left foot on the inside of that right leg. You could start a little bit lower down, but over time that foot would be a little bit higher up, with the toes pointing down. You could hold onto your left ankle to keep the foot in place with your right hand on your waist, but some inward pressure would eventually keep that left leg there as you take your hands back into prayer position gently pressing the palms together keep that right leg active keep breathing steady breaths here double check that feels okay in your left knee this posture is all about balance and bringing some rotation into your left hip just keep scanning through the body making sure everything feels okay holding that for another breath before we release and releasing your left foot down towards the ground. We're switching sides, so the weight goes down into the left leg now as you bend your right knee. Might be a little bit different on this side, judge what feels appropriate for you to guide your right knee out to the side. And then reaching down, you can assist that right leg on the inside of that left leg, toes pointing down. You could start a little bit lower, over time working that foot a little bit higher, and if you can balance and the foot stays in place, pressing gently into the inside of left leg, hands can be in prayer position in front of your chest. Strong left leg, shoulders relaxed, breathing steady, even breaths. And just double check that feels okay on your right knee. This posture is all about the rotation in your right hip and finding that balance where you can match the stillness of the posture with that still steady awareness to the breath breathing in breathing out and then gently releasing your right leg down hands to sides we're about to lie back down on our mat for our final posture Shavasana if you wanted to before you lie down you might want to get an extra layer of clothes so you feel warm and comfortable in Shavasana. Maybe put some socks on too. And if you've got a blanket handy, then that would keep you warm as well. If we're ready, we bend the knees, sit gently down, and then lie down. With the feet towards the edge of the mat, let the toes just drift off to the side, feeling the support as we lie down the back of the head on the mat, Gently release the shoulders to straighten out the arms. Take the arms wide, just off the mat with the back of the hands and the palms up towards the ceiling. Completely start to let go here. Imagine you're just melting down into the mat. Feel the face soft and relaxed. With the eyes closed now, stay with that steady breath. Just breathing however feels appropriate for you. 
completely let go of the muscles in the arms and in the legs. Imagine space now between all of your joints, space in the shoulders and in the neck. Take your awareness down the spine. Imagine the spine just settling into alignment. Space around the hips. Taking your awareness down the arms to the fingers, down the legs to the toes, and let everything completely go in Shavasana. And this posture is as important as always as all the other postures we've done. So I would encourage you here to match the stillness of this posture with that still, steady quality of mind. Can you for a little bit longer keep your attention turned in to simply become aware of the sensations throughout the whole body and that sensation of breath? Use the breath to anchor you into this present moment, right here, right now on your yoga mat. And we're staying here a little bit longer. So enjoy this time here in Shavasana. And then gently becoming aware of the fingers and the toes and you can begin by moving them a little bit. Moving the hands and the feet, bringing some awareness back to the body. And then taking the hands off the mat, you can reach them up towards the ceiling and whatever feels appropriate just to take them back behind the head. You could bend the elbows and have the back of the hands on the ground. And you can inhale here and just imagine that nice space as you lengthen from the fingers all the way down through to the toes. Breathing in. And then breathe out, pause there. We draw the knees gently in a little bit, reaching the fingers just below the knees to slowly, in this nice curled up shape, moving from side to side and backwards and forwards and then gently rolling onto our left side. We can get our bearings as we start to open up the eyes. Backing off that right leg a little bit will help us just come up to sitting. And however feels comfortable for you to sit in a nice easy cross leg position on your mat for a few more moments here. We put our hands in prayer position, breathing in. And then as we exhale, gently folding forwards to whoever feels okay with the hands, maybe the palms down, let the head go and relax for a moment. And then inhale, coming back up. Namaste. Well done for getting through that Hatha yoga class, especially if you've never done any yoga before. And just remember, if you do this a few times, the movements will become a little bit more familiar to you, and especially the sun salutations. The sun salutations might be the most challenging part of this practice, so you can work at building them up over time. In addition, there is a second beginner's Hatha yoga class if you want to have a look at that. It will be the same sun salutations, but different postures, so some variations there. There's also many more resources there's a beginner's course, other beginner classes, and when you're ready, you could move on to some improver-based classes, and that takes you through different styles of yoga as well. In addition, PDFs are downloadable for all the different sequences and postures, and there's also some MP3 audio resources. So wherever you are, have a really nice day, and I'll see you next time on your yoga mat.